for me. Come on, say glory. Glory, hallelujah. We're going to speak this morning from the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. And it reads on this wise. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when we are come nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach and shall speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, thank. Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your heart faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. God's word is blessed. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We, just like the Israelites here in this text, they are facing overwhelming odds and opposition and obstacles and sometimes in our own lives and in our churches and in our homes and our jobs uh, uh, etc uh, we feel sometimes outnumbered outmatched and it gives us a feeling of hopelessness and helplessness Anybody ever been there? Amen. Say amen. amen. Come on, I can't hear you. Amen, amen, amen. amen. It's more like it. <laughs> but here in this text, God gives divine support and a boost to these suffering, frightful Israelites. He gives a boost to their confidence. So the title of the message that I, that God has given me to give to you out of this good book is with God, my battles give me confidence. Tell somebody and tell them loud enough that the people up at the car wash at New Venere knew will hear you. Say with, with God, my battles, my battles. Give, me give me confidence. confidence. Glory to God. Glory to God. I could hear that. How some of you might want to ask the question, how do we fight and win life's Battles. Anybody ever wondered some of those questions sometime? Especially when the things didn't seem like it was going our way. Am I right about it? Yeah. Have anybody ever had to say, well, uh, ask the question is, how is a battle going to give me confidence? Amen. Do you know what I'm going through? Do you know what I've been through? How can this battle give me confidence. Well, 
if our battles are going to give us confidence, then let me share the first point with you. If our battles are going to give us confidence, we must have a mindset of a warrior's mentality. Say it this way, we must have the mindset of a biblical warrior. Repeat that after me. We must have the mindset of a biblical warrior. Now, I'm not talking about your friends, your family, or your ace coon boom, or your running friends. But I said, you must have the mindset of a biblical warrior. Amen. Amen. A warrior must be resilient. A warrior keeps on fighting in spite of. Can I get a witness? Amen. A warrior may get knocked down, but a, a real warrior, if he's knocked down, if he can, he's going to do all he can to get back up again and keep on fighting. Can I get a witness? Warriors do all they can to win. And true warriors will get back up over and over and over again. A true warrior goes down. I said a true warrior now. I'm not talking about one that will run and leave you in the foxhole. Right. A true warrior and true biblical warriors. Not people in the world that might get tired and give up or make excuses. But biblical warriors, they always go down if they do go down. They go down fighting. Right. David is a biblical example. How many of you know some of the stories of David? Amen. Amen. Clap, give God a hand for the life of David. A biblical warrior. David, and he was a warrior, and he went from being little David with a harp to young David with a slingshot. To King David with an earthly kingdom. Look at David in his life from, from young to as he matured and got older. He got experience through life. And every battle gave him just that much more experience and confidence in God. Can I get a witness? It is said that David had eight to nine battles in the course of his life. And some of them you may ask, and, and, and David won them all. Some of them you may ask, well, well, how did he win all of the battles that he was in? Well, I'm glad you asked the question because David won his battles because he put all of his trust in God. Come on, can you say amen? amen. Uh, I, I can't hear you. Amen. amen, amen. Glory to God. I'm not just saying that because I ran hearing aids. I'm just saying it because I know you can say it a little louder. <laughs> holler like when your team wins. Holler like when Mother McCoy was talking about Women Day and, the, and, and they, they, they getting ready to raise some money. I, I, I thought y'all were hollering about you were thinking about that whooping the men gave it last year. <laughs> if you think you hollering now, you just wait on for uh, juniors out. Come on, men. Can I hear you, men? Amen. Come on, let me hear the men say something. Come on, men. Amen. All right, all right. We need some men, not some boys now. That was men that put that whipping on the women last year. And we thank God for the little boys and we showed them the way and we came together 
One, two, or three, we came together. And through the men and the women, we came together. And we won. We got a victory. Even when the enemy thought we couldn't. But because we believed we could and because we came two and three together, God gave us a victory. And I know he's going to give us another victory. And in, the, in June, we all win. In the end, come on, give God a hand because a blessing is coming our way. And how we know that David trusted God is in Psalms 20 and 7. See, 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 David, and I believe that David won all of his battles because he did not let the crown that he wore on his head get into his head. He did not let his position or the crown or the place of authority. See, everybody can't have authority. You give some people a little authority, then they just think they pull to run everything and everybody. And you make one change, they'll get mad. But let me tell you something, who's in charge? David was a man after God's own heart, and he was a shepherd boy that rose to be a king. But he did not let that crown, he did not let his position get into his head. He knew where his help come from. Can I get a witness? Do you know where your help come from? David, in, in, in Psalms, in Psalms 20, let me see if I can find it in Psalms 20. In Psalms uh, 20 and 7, David says, do we have it up on the screen? Yeah, he says, I have been young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed bread, begging bread. Now that that was that was one of the, the, the scriptures, but the the one that I uh, uh, really want right now in the text is Psalms twenty and seven, where David says it's just like uh, what what Moses was saying to the the children of Israel. David is picking up on it and saying it, repeating it in one verse. What Moses said in four verses. David said in Psalms 20 and 7, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. See, when you win a battle, you must remember if you go in that battle with God, God will bring you out. But if you go in with your own intellect and all, your own will and your, and your own way, the enemy, they're waiting and watching because battles can be hard with God. Lord, have mercy. You don't want to go in one without God. But with God, our battles will give us confidence. Can I get another witness? Oh, yeah. One songwriter said, just like David, he said, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in him. I will keep my confidence. I will keep my faith in him. No matter what's going on, no matter what I face, whether it be the lion or whether it be the bear or whether it be a giant, I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to trust in the Lord and I'm going I'm to have faith enough to meet the enemy head on if God, if God commands me to do so. Because I can do all things in the name of the Lord. Can I get a witness? Not the pastor, not the deacons, not people that, that just, just teach Sunday school, but it's the Lord. The Lord and the anointing is what makes the difference. Can I get a witness? David was anointed and he was an appointed. And let me tell you something, when you get in some of these battles and spiritual wickedness in high places, you better make sure that you have an anointing or you know somebody with an anointing. 
because the anointing makes the difference. The enemy can slip in so easy and cause us and tarnish us where we are and, and get into our mind and, and forget who we are. Forget who God is. Forget where he brought us from. But I want you to know David was anointed and every battle that he was appointed to go in, God brought him out. He, he said, I was young and now I'm old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The second thing that if we, if we uh, want to make sure that we have God and we have life's battles and we are winning confidently, number second, not only must we have the mindset of a biblical warrior, but we must all, number two, we must have the, have the armor of a biblical warrior. Yeah. An example in the Bible that we get another warrior is the Apostle Paul. Paul says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand the wiles, the wiles of the tricks, the plots, the schemes uh, that, that I know more than you know. Uh, uh, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but, but see, that comes from the enemy. But when God orders your footsteps, you don't have to worry about what people say or what they think. When God does it, tell somebody, hold on just a little while longer. Everything is going to be all right. Can I get a witness? And we must have the whole armor, not part of the armor, but the whole armor. He said we must have it and we must have it. See, and see, you can have the armor. You can have your Bible. You can have the armor, but Paul says, put it on. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody, put it on. Yeah, you, you, you don't put the armor on on, on on Sunday and then take it off on Monday. Uh, you, you, you don't put it on Monday through Friday and then get loose and take your armor off. No, you kill the whole armor on seven days a week. Because you never know when the enemy might place an attack on your mind and your heart and your soul. But he said, put on the whole armor. That ye may withstand those tricky ways of the enemy. Oh, he was more subtle told than any beast in the garden. He, he, tricked, he tricked Eve and, and that led to Adam and, and it brought the fall of man. But thanks be to God, God still had a plan. And we got confidence in that plan that God delivered us even way back in Genesis, the, the third chapter. God had a plan for our deliverance. We got the victory in the battle in the garden. Can you say yeah? yeah? Paul says put on that whole armor. And the six piece, there were six pieces of armor. I don't have time to talk about all of the pieces of the armor, you know, from the, from the head and, and on down the, the, the belt and the breastplate and, and the other ones. But I would like to say something about the sixth piece. And that sixth piece of, of that armor, uh, it was the sword. And it's called the spirit of the spirit, the word of God. How many of you know that the word of God is what we fight with? How many of you know that the word of God is not trying to get the last word in every argument? But the word of God will give us and take us through every battle. And if we trust God and stand on his word, we will win. Even when it doesn't look like it, even if it doesn't feel like it, if we stand on God's word. I don't know what your enemies are. I don't know what your battles are. But I do know if you apply God's word, you can win. Can I get a witness? 
I don't know what you attempted about. I don't know what you tried and tested about. But I do know that if you have the whole armor and if you put God first, he will fight your every battle. And we look and we look and, and, and when we look at the whole armor, it's kind of like a movie where a man had a, a special suit he would put on. Yeah, I know y'all already some some of them popped in some of y'all mind. Iron Man, I know, because I know you've seen it. But how I many you know that the, the, the suit got power? But the suit has to be activated. If the suit is not activated, the man wearing the suit has no power. He's just an ordinary man. And he could lose any battle. A woman could whoop him. But when the Power is activated. He gets strength. He gets more power. He can leap in a single bound. And that's the way we are. The, the greatest power that we have, the word of God tells us what our greatest power is. Now we know what our offensive weapon is. That's the word of God. But the word of God tells us what our greatest power is. And our greatest power in any battle is prayer. Let me hear you say prayer. Prayer changes things. Prayer is the greatest power that you can have. How many of you know that prayer and some things come with fasting and praying? How many of you know how you made it? You prayed. Grandmama prayed. Somebody prayed for you. Can I get a witness? Some of us are living right now, all of us, even me too. We are living off of grandma's prayer today. Why? Because she prayed and those prayers went up. Grandma, grandpa might be gone, but you are still here because somebody prayed for you. Tell somebody, somebody prayed for me. I'm here not by my power. Tell them not my power. Not my power, but God's power. God's power. The prayer, the prayer is what infuses the armor, the whole armor of God. Prayer is what makes it work. When people think it won't work. All I want to say to you is in the last verse that what, 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 uh, what, what God told, what Moses had to say to the children of Israel. And he said, he talked to them in, in verse uh, 31, chapter 31. Moses said that he told him, he said that, he said, uh, and the Lord, he that doeth, doth go before thee. He will be with thee. Tell me, say, he will. He will. He will not fail. Come on, he said, he will not fail. He will not fail thee. He said, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. Oh, I'm glad, aren't you glad that God has our back in every battle? Whatever battle you face or whatever battle you are in, be not dismayed. Don't tuck tail and run. It don't cost you nothing to get down on your knees and pray. Can I say, can, I, can you say hallelujah? I'm, I'm glad what the, what the old folks said in one of the hymns. It said, fear not, be not dismayed. I'm reminded of that whole hymn. It's, that old hymn, it says, God will tell somebody. God will. God will take care of you. Be not afraid, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings and love abide. God will. God will, God will take care of you. Tell somebody, I know God will. God will take care of me. Sometimes I have to cry all night long. Sometimes I have to pace the floor in the middle of the night. But I know that God will, God will take care of me. Obstacles don't block your path. Obstacles are the path. Can you say yeah? yeah. 
Be not dismayed. Whatever be the tie, God will. God will take care of you. I want you to do something. Be not dismayed. I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Think about some of your problems you have right now. But meditate on God. Whatever and the word be that you just heard. Get it in your spirit. God. So you need a moment right now. You need a moment right Take now. Take care. Just meditate. Let your oh, blood go down. Keep your eyes closed. And just meditate on that song. Oh, Knowing that God. If you let him, he will. If you know that he will. God Didn't he bring you through last year, the year before? This is not your first obstacle. He will. This is not your first problem. Sickness. He will. Or disappointment. I know. But meditate on it. Meditate on you. My good, my good, my good, my good will. See, when your eyes are closed, you can't even watch the will. television. He will take you care. You can't look at a world of fantasy. Oh, if you let him, he will. Of you. Oh, I'm so glad. Huh. You have those moments where you're all he alone. Take care of you. Don't seem like nobody's at your back. Is there anybody in here that no God will? He will see you through. Take care of you. Oh, I know. You can open your eyes now. If you believe God will take care of you, stand to your feet and lift your hand toward heaven. He'll hear all of your cry. Yes, he will. He'll withhold no good thing from you. You got to be serious about it. You might not need him, but your children need him. Your grandchildren need him. He'll take care. Yes, he will. Oh, the enemy don't want you to know that. The enemy don't like to hear that. He wants you. He wants you to think that God has forgotten about you. And he doesn't hear your cry. He doesn't know your circumstance. God will. I know he will. I've got him when I have anybody else. When mama's gone, daddy's gone. But God will. Lincoln Park Holiness Church is about loving people and helping community. Our main objective is winning souls. You are welcome to partner with us or help sponsor this ministry and broadcast with a donation. Please visit our website at LincolnParkChurch.com and click the Let's Give tab at the top of the screen. Feel free to leave comments. You can also download the Givelify app on your mobile phone and look for Lincoln Park Church. Cash app, cash tag, Lincoln Park CRF. We are located at 13 Heath Street in Raleigh, North Carolina. 
God bless you. And we look forward to you joining us next week on NFI Radio and Catch the Wave from the number one radio station reaching the world with gospel music and preaching.